Okay, let's start. We're looking at another class in general physics today. According to our schedule, this week we will be talking about two lectures actually on chapter 19 in our textbook, in the night textbook will be the reference, but we'll be discussing the um, heat and the first law of thermodynamics. Yes. Okay, so heat and the first law of thermodynamics. I'm going to start with a short review and then we'll move into the contents of today's lecture. So in our previous lecture, we talked a little bit about the states of the matter, of matter. In fact, we also worked on your stimulation, worked on that too, the different states, right? The first state, solid, in which the each molecule's nearest neighbors basically do not change. So this guy is always closest to this guy, and it maintains its same shape. The liquid, again the molecules are close together, and but they can move. So their nearest neighbors for a few molecules will move to other places. So if let's get our, we can cool it down. We'll move slowly down as the liquid cools. You will know our, as we continue to cool, our water is cooling. That's so it's now almost, you can see we're starting to move slowly. We're moving between liquidish and sort of a solidish. And gas, as you can see here, where the gas is moving, basically it's empty space and the molecules move freely throughout the empty space. Now let's go back to our phase diagram on our web page. We talked about phase diagrams. In a phase diagram, the x-axis is temperature and the y-axis is pressure. This is a typical phase diagram that you will see in a technical book. You can see here the temperature scale is Kelvin across the top and Celsius across the bottom. The pressure scale on this axis, on the left axis, is in Pascals and atmospheric pressure is about a 100 kilopascals. So here we have going between 1,000 times atmospheric pressure and 1 over 1,000 atmospheric pressure. Now, another scale which is commonly used for simplicity is to say the atmosphere pressure is 1. We call that the bar. 10 times atmospheric pressure is then 10 bar. 100 times atmospheric pressure is 100 bar. 1,000 times is 1 kilobar. Um, a millibar is 1,000th of atmospheric pressure. 10 millibars then would be a hundredth, and 100 millibars would be a tenth. So these are two equivalent pressure scales. So one bar is basically the atmospheric pressure. Now let's look carefully at this diagram now. This provides the phase transitions for two crucial components of our atmosphere, CO2 and water. We don't talk too much about nitrogen because nitrogen and oxygen, they're basically always gases. We don't really come into contact too much with them in other forms. But okay, but let's, okay, now let's first of all look at the water one. Okay, in this area of low temperature, it doesn't matter what pressure you are. Below zero degrees C, basically, except for a little bit here at low pressure, but once you're be below about minus 25 degrees C, water is solid. It's ice. It doesn't matter what pressure you're at. In this area, at high temperature, basically, you have gas. In other words, it's steam anywhere in this big area. This area in this, um, what would you say, the, um, this big area in here, triangle-shaped area actually, is where we get liquid water. So you can think of ourselves now, let's, let's now trace at one pressure, one bar. 
So at atmospheric pressure, we are very cold. We have solid, solid, solid. We cross at zero degrees C, we cross over into liquid water. If we keep increasing the temperature at 100 degrees C, we'll cross over into gas or steam and we'll continue to be in steam. Note there is a triplet point for water. Now that's at, in which case where you can get solid water, liquid water, and steam all at the same time. In order to get that, you have to be pretty close to zero degrees C, slightly above zero degrees C, 0 0.01 degrees C, you have, but you have to be at very low pressure, less than one hundredth of atmospheric pressure. Then you can get these three things combining. You can also note if I go to very high pressure, I can get liquid water below zero. Okay? That's another unique thing about li of water, is this little thing. Okay, now continuing on, let's look at, compare this now to carbon dioxide, another important gas. Okay, as you can see here, in this area, just like water, it's solid. In this big area, it's all gas. And we have this, this area in here, it's liquid. This small little area, it's liquid. And up here, we have a different phase called supercritical CO2. Okay, which is a different phase. We're not going to talk about that in the textbook. But anyway, so you can see here in our daily experience at atmospheric pressure, we come along here, we go immediately from solid to gas, CO2. There's no way to go through liquid. We have to be almost 10 times atmospheric pressure before we can start to find a way in which we get some liquid CO2. And liquid CO2 is only in a very small area. We have to be, be basically be close, close to zero or below zero, uh, between z minus 50 and about, you can see here, 50 degrees C. You have to be in this narrow range and this small area at high pressure where we get liquid CO2. Now you can also see how unique we are here on the Earth. Our temperatures at our pressure, it's just in this small little area where we can have liquid water. And thankfully in Taiwan, the temperature is always somewhere between here, right? It's always in this little area where we have liquid water. It, it doesn't go too hot where we would have steam, and it doesn't get too cold where we'd have solid ice all the time. So it's very how unique the Earth is with its atmosphere to allow us to work here. If we are at a bigger planet, Think of it now, what would happen if we were living in a bigger planet like, say, Jupiter? The pressure is going to be much higher, right? So we'd be up here with a higher pressure. And we'd have much more, it would be, so steam would be much harder to get. If we were at a smaller, um, smaller planet, we'd be dropping down here. Our pressure would be much less if there was more atmosphere. Now for Mars, for example, the Mars has very little pressure, little bit of atmosphere. So this curve for water is way down, would be way down here. So we could never really expect to find liquid water on Mars because our curve is way down here at this very low pressure spot. Okay, so that's basically the beginning of our preamble, quite a bit about phase diagrams. Now, um, We'd like to watch a short video of, final or finish our review, is a short video of Heat versus Temperature by Julius Sumner Miller. I will um, let you run this, this before we, you, I'd like to pause this video. Please click on the link and look at this video.